Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Table completion questions come up regularly and can appear in any section of the test. These are gap fill questions that require you to fill in missing words. The table will be made up of columns and rows containing information. Generally, tables categorise information. That is, they group pieces of information that are related in some way or share the same features. The subject matter could be almost anything, but as long as you have a good strategy to follow, you'll be able to answer any question you're given. Follow the advice in this lesson and you'll be well prepared. The lesson includes sample questions, the strategy and some tips, vocabulary, a practice question and the answers. Here are two sample questions from past papers. The recording for this first sample question is a telephone conversation between a clerk at the inquiry desk of a transport company and a man who is asking for travel information. You're required to fill in the missing information about the cost of fares for bus and train journeys from Bayswater to Harbour City. The recording for this question is a radio broadcast about the National Arts Centre. You're required to fill in four pieces of missing information about the centre. I'm going to use this second example to teach you the answer strategy and give you tips and advice on how to overcome the challenges presented by this type of question. You will have a short time to prepare before the speaker begins talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. Read the instructions carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you're allowed to write for the answer. The instructions for our sample question state that you must write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. If you write more than three words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information given is correct. The first sample question I showed you stated that you must write no more than one word and or a number for the answer. So the number of words allowed does vary between questions. Don't get caught out. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they are listed in the question. So for this question you'll hear answer 17 first, then answer 18 and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. The next task to do in your preparation time is to look at column headings. The column headings tell you what type of information each column contains. It's essential to read these as they'll help you to understand the table and give you a big clue as to what sort of information will be contained in the recording. The column headings in our practice question are day, time, event, venue and ticket price. Also try to predict the answers. The information in the column headings, as well as the rest of the table, will enable you to predict what the answers might be before you listen to the recording. Doing this will focus your mind on what to listen out for when the recording plays. Occasionally you'll be able to predict the actual word, but most often it will be the type of information that you'll be able to determine. The answers to table completion questions will usually be factual information, such as names, places, dates, times and prices. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the recording and identify the information needed for the answers. Have a go at predicting some of the answers in our practice question. There are four answers to fill in, 17 to 20. Pause the video to do this, then have a look at my predictions on the next slide. Here are my predictions. Answer 17 will be the name of a room or facility. 18 will be the name of a film. 19 a price in pounds. And 20 an exhibition title. You can see that just a few seconds spent making predictions can give you a lot of information about what you need to listen out for in the recording. This will greatly improve your chances of identifying the correct answers. While you're listening to the recording, 
Listen out for the information that comes before the answer you're waiting for, as it appears in the table. These are the key words you need to identify. For example, for answer 17, listen out for the speaker talking about Mozart's opera, The Magic Flute. The place, or venue, where it will be performed will probably come in the same sentence, or the next one. In all types of listening questions, you need to listen out for synonyms and paraphrasing. These are something else that you may be able to predict. If you have time before the recording starts, scan the question to identify key words or phrases that are likely to be replaced by synonyms, and think of some that might be used. Two that stand out in our question are Saturday and Sunday, for which a likely synonym is weekend, and price, for which a possible synonym is cost. As you're listening to the recording, remind yourself that you're not only looking for the exact words as they're used in the question, but words and phrases that have the same meaning. We'll look at some synonyms that have been used in this question when we review the answers. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for students, and some of them will almost certainly be present in table completion questions. The six types are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters and addresses. You must be able to recognise them in speech and to write them correctly in your answers. I've written a whole lesson on this topic, including eight listening exercises, to help you recognise and learn these types of vocabulary. I've put a link to it in the notes below this video. The examiners will try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information you're given. So you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. The leaflet states that the sculpture exhibition is in Gallery 1, but it is, in fact, in Gallery 2. The usual price of cinema tickets is £5.50. However, the cost of attending the special screening of Great Expectations on Monday evening is reduced to £4.50. The performance of The Magic Flute by Mozart starts at 7pm. No, sorry, the doors open at 7 o'clock but the curtain goes up at 7.30. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer, or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. It's now time for you to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. Pause the video, listen to the recording and identify the answers. Write them down so that you can check them later. When you've completed this practice activity, continue the video. I go through the answers next. To hear the recording, click the link in the notes below this video to the table completion lesson on my website. Scroll down to the two recordings. You have the choice of listening to just the recording for these table completion questions or listening to the full recording, which also covers a set of note completion questions. Listening to the full recording will help you to better understand the context of the topic, and you'll hear it all in the real test, of course. However, the choice is yours. The part of the audio related to the table completion questions starts at 3 minutes 10 seconds into the recording. Here are the correct answers. Pause the video while you check them against your own, then we'll go through them one at a time. Answer 17 is Garden Hall or The Garden Hall. Here's a section of the recording this answer appears in. If you're interested in classical music, 
then we recommend that you go along to the National on either Monday or Tuesday evening at 7.30 for a spectacular production of The Magic Flute, probably the most popular of all Mozart's operas. It's in the Garden Hall. Earlier, I recommended that you should listen out for the information, the key words, that come before the answer in the table. That is, mention of Mozart's opera, The Magic Flute. As I suggested, answer 17, it's in the garden hall, comes immediately after this. The garden hall is the name of a room or facility, as we predicted. Names of places are proper nouns, so must be written with a capital letter at the start of each word. Answer 18 is three lives. Here's a section of text it appears in. For those more interested in the cinema, you might like to see the new Canadian film, which is showing on Wednesday evening at 8pm, in Cinema 2, and that's called Three Lives. Again, all the key words from the table are in the sentence preceding the answer, so you should have been able to identify it quite easily. Remember to use capital letters for this answer as well. Answer 19 is £4.50. Here's the sentence it appears in. Tickets cost just £4.50, which is a reduction on the usual price of £5.50. A synonym is used in this sentence, ticket cost for ticket price. It also contains a distractor, which could catch you out if you weren't listening very carefully. The distractor phrase is, which is a reduction on. Answer 20 is Faces of China. Here's a section of text this answer appears in. But you can see the centre's main attraction at the weekend, because on Saturday and Sunday, 11am to 10pm, they're showing a wonderful new exhibition that hasn't been seen anywhere else in Europe yet. It's a collection of Chinese art called Faces of China. Key words from the table are replaced with a synonym in the information preceding this answer and also in the answer sentence. Weekend has been used instead of Saturday and Sunday, although the two days are mentioned as well. There's also an example of paraphrasing. A collection of art has been used, which means the same as an exhibition of Chinese art. This paraphrasing makes it a little more difficult to identify this answer, but all the clues are there if you listen carefully. If you got any of the answers wrong, listen to the recording again and see if you can pick them out now that you're more familiar with the text. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Now practice using this strategy with other table completion questions from past papers. It's only with practice that your skills will improve and you'll get the score you need. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.